Is sexual orientation by nature or nurture? Interestingly, for almost 30 years, grant funding agencies have spent tens of millions of dollars and scientists have spent hundreds of thousands of hours trying to prove homosexuality is by nature by searching for the gay gene. And all this money and time have led to the conclusion that there is no gay gene. These are not my words, but the words of Andrea Ghana, a research fellow at the Broad Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Harvard Medical School in Boston. Andrea Ghana and his colleagues performed the most recent genetic studies searching for the gay gene. These studies examined and reported data from hundreds of thousands of people who provided DNA and behavioral information to two large genetic surveys, the UK Biobank study and the private genetics firm 23andMe. Ghana found people who reported at least one same-sex experience had variations in DNA on chromosomes 7, 11, 12, and 15. However, Ghana concluded these four genetic variants cannot reliably predict someone's sexual orientation. As Ghana states, there's really no predictive power with these genetic variations. These findings reinforce the idea that human sexual behavior is complex and can't be pinned on any simple constellation of DNA. There is no gay gene. Rather, non-heterosexuality is in part influenced by many tiny genetic effects. Ghana's conclusion should come as no surprise, because not only has science not found a gay gene, science hasn't found a heterosexual or bisexual gene either. In fact, with all the money and time that's been invested in the search for the gay gene, no one has ever systematically asked the question, where's the heterosexual gene? And why has no one systematically asked this question before? Because it's long been assumed there must be a gene associated with heterosexuality because heterosexuality is normal. Remind me again what happens when we assume. To be clear, there is no definitive scientific evidence for a gay gene, nor is there any definitive scientific evidence for a heterosexual gene, nor a bisexual gene. But this is not to say that sexual orientation must be by nurture. Beyond genetics, scientists have other methods to determine sexual orientation as to whether it's due to nature or nurture. For example, one of these methods uses a sexual orientation concordance rate. A sexual orientation concordance rate is the probability two individuals has the same sexual orientation. Sexual orientation concordance rates are calculated and compared among three groups of people. People who share the same genetics, like monozygotic twins, who are about 99% genetically alike. People who share some of the same genetics, like dizygotic twins and siblings, who are about 50% genetically alike. And people who share a non-related, randomly selected from the population percentage of genetics. If sexual orientation is by nature, then sexual orientation concordance rates meaning the percentage of people whose sexual orientations coincide with one another, should be mm. highest for people who are most genetically alike mm. and lowest for people who are most genetically different. If sexual orientation mm. is by nurture, then sexual orientation concordance rates should not significantly differ based upon how genetically alike people are. More than 50 years of research studies have revealed Sexual orientation mm. concordance rates are highest for monozygotic twins, followed by dizygotic twins and siblings, mm. and lowest for randomly selected pairs of individuals. These findings from sexual orientation concordance rate studies support the notion that a person's sexual orientation has some fluidity to it. That is, it may change 
due to life circumstances, but it is otherwise relatively stable over a person's lifespan and rooted by nature. As with most human behavior, nature sets mm -hmm. our sexual orientations range and nurture mm -hmm. puts us at some point within this range. Mm 